Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ali if you're new to my channel and welcome to Beauty With A Purpose. Now today, today is a literally like a life changing video. I haven't spoken a lot about this. I've told my testimony about my husband and it wasn't even really a testimony. It was just how I knew my husband was sent from God and like how we met and like how God confirmed the process. And so <clears throat> today's video is on how I found God. What my testimony, how I found God, how I became saved and what leads me to continue to follow God today and want to be just in his presence constantly. And so, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get right into that. Okay, so let's start from the beginning of who I used to be. I don't like to dwell on that a lot because I wasn't a very good person. I would steal. I was very much against personally stealing from people but i hung out with people that stole from other people and like that wouldn't bother me like i would steal from stores i would sell the clothes and i think back and i'm just like if i was so much more wiser like i would have some money stashed away but obviously like i wasn't wise within stealing anyway so like it never makes sense but i just think of how like ignorant i was like I would steal clothes, I would sell it, I would make all this money, and then it's like I would be broke within the same day. Like it never, and like that's what led me to keep stealing and stealing and stealing every day. And then like that's just like how I, and I also had a job as well. So like that wasn't just my only way of getting money. Like I had jobs as well. Like I've always been employed. I've had so many different jobs. Like I'm pretty sure I've worked just about everywhere where I live just about and so like I'm not proud to say those things like I'm not proud that that's who I was and at the time like it didn't bother me and I don't see how and like I like like I know how and it's just because the enemy had such a strong hold of my mind and like generational curses and all of this stuff that I didn't understand because I didn't know God but and so like that's just how I made the money and need, needless to say like nothing fleshly is permanent so i ended up getting caught stealing at old navy and this fly is gonna bother me i ended up getting caught stealing at old navy and that was my scare that's whenever i was like okay like i'm done stealing but i still didn't go back to like like i still didn't go to seeking god at this point i was just like what scared me was like stealing has like limits like it's like 50 to 500 dollars is like a misdemeanor and then it's like 500 and so and so like 500 to such and such like there's limits to theft but after you get caught stealing one time from between 50 and 500 like the charge keeps going up even if you steal a stick of gum and they catch you like that charge goes up like it's no longer a misdemeanor like it's the next level just because you already have that prior thing on it and so I was like okay and like even and I was like okay yeah I'm not stealing anymore like I kind of cut off the person that I would go out with and steal and like we, we were best friends like I loved her like she had my back I had her back like we, we fought like sisters but, like I kind of just had to like cut her off because I just kind of felt like okay like I've learned my lesson you haven't learned your lesson like that doesn't mean I'm more of a person than you because still at this time I didn't find God I was just like I don't want to be in jail like I like my freedom too much to be in jail is what scared me it wasn't even that I got to find God like that was still nowhere in my mind at the time it was just I don't want to be in jail and so like that happened and I was still this drinker partier go out get drunk dance like just be a worldly girl um if you will and so of course i was having sex outside of marriage and obviously that's how ethan was here and so like i don't like to talk about that a lot because like when i think of who i was like that old Allie, like she disgusted me like and i know it sounds so bad but like i'm talking about myself and like I disgust myself whenever I look back at who I was and the things I did and so of course like I said like I was still going out drinking and partying and meeting guys and just entertaining guys like just because I was bored I guess you could say or like because I knew I could and like that's not okay like I was finding every which way like I don't know like I just I was a bad person and so I need this to say like during all this time I was on and off with Ethan's dad 
and so like whenever we were off like we were off and I would talk to somebody else and he would talk to somebody else and like it was just like this ongoing cycle and like it wasn't healthy um really traumatic things happened between me and Ethan's dad and that led me to also allow myself to become a person that I wasn't and I became this person um I used to get in fights now I didn't really I always knew that I could fight like I was very much raised in the household where and it wasn't so much my mom but like my aunt was very much like she used to make me my sisters and my cousins all fight each other so it was pretty much basically like if you fight you go out there and fight and you better win because if you don't fight you're gonna come home get a whooping and then you're gonna go fight again and you're gonna keep getting whoopings until you win and so like that's pretty much how I was raised and that's not how I'm raising my kids I am raising my kids to defend themselves with ne when necessary but don't be a bully don't pick fights but defend yourself when necessary is how I'm raising my kids because I don't condone fighting but I also don't condone I don't see no other way to put it but my children being punks like I don't and I'm not raising my kids the way that now will I let my boys fight if they're in a fight yes I will because you guys are brothers you're gonna have to learn how to solve this issue because at the end of the day you two are the only two that that have each other's back but that's a side note anyways back to how I was raised and so I got in my first fight whenever I was a senior in high school and it was all behind my little sister destiny because these girls tried to punk her when I wasn't around and she was my age and so I was like okay needless to say I, I won that fight and then I got in my second fight and this was with someone that I had called my friend at one point and one thing that I'm learning in life is that you cannot use that term just with every person that you meet or just because you like a person's personality like you can't call them your friend like I feel like people use that term way too lightly like I haven't even called even now in Christ I have called people my best friend and I don't even know why like I've allowed myself thinking that well if this person's in Christ I'm in Christ like they want the best for me and that's not true but anyways and so I fought this other girl that was what it was I didn't win I didn't lose it was just like we stood our ground and so the third fight I I won and like and this was just the person that I was and this was before I was in that domestic um that abusive relationship and so once I got in that abusive relationship well I started fighting him and so then it gave me this mentality of like well if I can fight him like I can fight any man like I don't care who you are I will fight you if you do me wrong I will fight you if I don't like you I will fight you if at the moment I'm mad at you and like that's just who I was and I, that's not a very good person to be because for one one of the seven deadly sins is wrath like why are you so angry like why should you be so angry to lead yourself to that point like to where you want to hit somebody and like that's something I'm still getting under control is like learning how to control that anger like I haven't fought since I was in the world but like in the world that's all I knew was you know what I can fight this person and I'm probably gonna win and it's I'm not gonna care about it like I didn't care about hurting those people and when I was in the world like there was never any consequences about it and I didn't even think if there was gonna be any consequences about it like that was always my mindset like oh if I do like I never thought about consequences I never thought about the big picture and now because of me never thinking about the big picture like I'm so hmm, there's so many things that I want to do now but I'm having to fix things from the past, if that makes sense. I know it makes sense. Like m your past very much does affect your future when you don't think about your future because your, f your past can affect your future in a very positive way. And mine did because it made me who I am today. And like I said, the person that I was, like I'm not happy to be that person. I was angry, I was promiscuous, I was, a I was drunk I used to smoke weed and if I wasn't drinking I was smoking if I wasn't smoking I was drinking and so I was just like and I would drive under these conditions and like I look back and I see how God's hand was already over my life protecting me there's so many times I should have gone to jail for drunk driving so many times I should have gone to jail for having weed in my car like just so many times like I should have suffered consequences and I didn't and the thing that really led me to God, though, is I was so tired of going back and forth, like through the cycle of, with Ethan's dad that I was finally like, OK, I'm done. And then, of course, whenever you decide to be done, I find out that I'm pregnant. And so I was like, well, wow. OK, so like, what am I going to do here? Of course, the first seed that the enemy plants in your head all the time is like abortion. 
because I had all those thoughts go through my mind like okay I know what kind of relationship we had together I know we're not going to be together like I know that I never wanted to have a kid and not have a family like that was just never something I wanted even though I continuously put myself in that situation for it to be a possibility like that wasn't something that I wanted and those are the kinds of things that I that, that I mean whenever I say that I did things and I never thought about the consequences and the crazy thing is is like my sister was getting all of my pregnancy symptoms like I wasn't getting anything like at the time my boobs just hurt and like I was like okay like I'm about to start my period and my little sister, well my, well, my sister was like, hey, take a pregnancy test with me just for like moral support, I guess you could say. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I know I'm not pregnant. And well, lo and behold, hers is negative, mine is positive. And I'm like, what in the actual heck? Like, Lord, I would like, and I, and I didn't even say Lord at the time. I was just like, God, like I wanted to be done. Like I didn't, like I was ready to step away from that. And I think that that was just a tactic from the enemy to try to be like, like he knew I was ready to step away from that. Now that I'm in Christ, like I look back at things and I'm like, that was all the enemy. Like, oh, you're done with that? Well, boom, pregnancy, go back and run back to what you know and continue to put up with that. But instead I was like, like I did a complete 180. Like I remember, like I remember I was constantly sick and at the time like, I didn't know God. I, all I knew was how to ask God for stuff. I never knew how to thank God for stuff. I never knew how to actually come to him in need of like a healing heart for direction and things like that. So all I knew at the time was, okay. And I'm pretty sure at the time, the only thing that kept me from getting an abortion was that I didn't have money for an abortion. And so I was like, and then like the more that I would, like I thought about it every day, I was like, okay, like my mom always told me you have a baby. You take care of it, that's your bed, you lie in it. And so, okay, well, I'm gonna have this baby and I'm gonna take care of it. And then the more the more I grew attached to Ethan, I didn't know he was Ethan at the time, but the more I got attached to him, the more I started to think about me dying or him dying. And then I was like, okay, I, I, would, I didn't know God, but I always knew that heaven and hell were a real place. And at that point I wanted to know, okay, well, we'll get somebody sent to hell and how do I get to heaven? Because if the world were to end, I don't know if I'm going to heaven. And I know that my son is innocent. And so he has a ticket to heaven regardless. And I don't want to spend eternity without my son. And this is the first time I've ever told my testimony without crying. And so that's what it was for me. I knew I was having, I, at the time I didn't know it was my son, but I knew I was like, I don't want to be without my baby whenever God comes back. I want to be able to lead my baby to heaven if he doesn't come back while he's still illness. If 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 he doesn't come back while he's still innocent, but a grown man, I want to know that I did everything I could to lead my child to Christ that way he continued to hold on to that ticket to heaven. I started to seek and I started to wonder and the first step was starting to go to church. And that was really hard. I didn't understand what speaking in tongues were. Like I kid you not, the first time I heard the pastors of the church that I found start speaking in tongues it was like I was like is this I was like she's white but she's speaking really good Spanish like I don't even understand her like that is legit what I thought and and then I finally asked um the girl that introduced me to the church and that kept inviting me I was like I was like your pastor speaks Spanish and she's like no that's called speaking in tongues and so I was like Oh, okay. Like, so now it's weird to me because I still don't know. And so long, so this was at the very beginning of my pregnancy, like still within the first two months um, or so. And then like, I just remember being so sick. And the only time I didn't feel sick is when I was at church or whenever I was reading God's word. And I was like, okay, like this is real. Like I'm not hallucinating. And so I ended up actually going to Colorado to help my sister out for a bit. And we found a church there we started going to. And I remember, and I hadn't been baptized yet. I just knew that I was seeking God and I was searching God and I wanted to know, how do I, how do I know that I know that I know that I'm gonna go to heaven? And it's so crazy because I only wanted to be in heaven because of my, because of the child I was bringing into this world. But by the end of my pregnancy, I wanted to be in heaven because I didn't want to upset my God, my my God and my like my heavenly father. Like I didn't want to upset him. And so I remember being in Colorado at this church and 
it's called Thrive. I actually really like that. I liked the church at the moment. I didn't get to see the inner working of things, but I mean, I'll always remember that as the church that introduced me to baptism and what it meant to be forgiven because the pastor baptized me while I was pregnant. No judgment, no anything. And I remember this song that led me to want to get baptized and it was by Hillsong United and it was Touch the Sky. And I, I can tell you the lyrics, it was, I found my life when my knees hit the ground. Um, and I was thinking like, that's so true. I found the true meaning of life when I was at my lowest. I had nobody. I couldn't even keep a job because I was so sick from my pregnancy. I was at the lowest that you could think of being low, almost, almost homeless. And so I just kept thinking to myself, like there has to be more, there has to be better. And so after I just, after I heard that song and then I got baptized and I was like, okay, like I feel it, I feel the change. Like to me, baptism was me washing everything away and starting over new, which is the true symbolic meaning of baptism is to bury everything that's old and rise again new and let's have a fresh start with God. And that really, the fresh start happens at repentance. But baptism is truly just being able to wash all of that off of you and rise again and say, okay, I'm washed clean. I'm forgiven because I repented. Let's start new. And that's what I did. I started new and I'm not gonna say that I've been perfect because I have backslid. I continue to have, a, after I had Ethan, I mean, it was easy, of course, to not go back to drinking and partying when you're pregnant because you literally can't. Like, you just can't. And so the next thing I did was, um, not the next thing I did, but I, I did end up backsliding when Ethan was about almost one, maybe like between nine and 11 months. And I went back to drinking, I went back to partying, and. <clears throat> I remember in the middle of the night, um, it had been a night after I had gone out. I was still going to church regularly, the same schedule. And I remember one of the sisters from the church told me like, and I don't know how she knew. She just came up to me and she told me and she said, and she was the young adults leader and I was in the young adults group, obviously. And she just told me, she said, whatever you're doing, you need to stop. That's not how you act when you're walking with Christ. Those aren't the things you do when you have Christ inside of you. And like, of course, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, like hard headed, like I, I'm coming to church, I'm reading the word, like what else do you want? And so I was still a babe in Christ at this time. I mean, I didn't find God till I was pregnant with Ethan. And at that, it was kind of late in my pregnancy. Like I was five months and then from there on. And so by the time it had only been a year. And so I was backsliding. I remember I came home one night from drinking and stuff and I was sleeping and I remember, don't let these people tell you that sleep paralysis is just sleep paralysis. It's not. These are actual demons that are trying to attack you in your sleep. It's not just sleep paralysis. And remember, because I've always had this since I was a kid, but I didn't know at the time. And so I remember I was sleeping and I you, you, you just get, I start to hear like the static from like TVs. Like, I don't know if you, you, you know what I mean, but like, just like a static radio. And so like, I can't hear actually anything around me. And then I always know that it's about to start once I start to hear that static. And so I instantly start praying. And then you feel the pressure. And then from the pressure, you wanna talk and you can't. It's just empty. And it's hard to even get out those empty words. And then you can't move, you can't move anything. And if you can manage to move anything, it's heavy. And like I said, I've had this multiple times, but it was never as drastic as this one time. And I remember I was praying and I couldn't get out of it. And I started singing songs of praise and just worshiping God, singing and praying and just praying. And I hadn't got my prayer language at this time. And so I was just praying and just singing songs of praise. And I remember I used to always try to keep my eyes shut because when you're in this state, you can still literally see everything around you. You just can't talk and you can't move, but you can see everything. And it's so scary because everything's dark. Well, this one time I opened my eyes and there was something big, dark, and, and it had red eyes right in my face. 
yelling at me like ah and i was just like okay like i need to turn away because these are all the demons i'm letting get attached to me by getting drunk by going out and associating with those who are drunk and putting myself in these circumstances and these places where these demons are even able to attach themselves to me and so i woke up and this is all happening at 3 a.m the devil's hour and i'm bawling and i call my pastor and she prays over the phone with me and i'm like okay still couldn't go to sleep so i just play the bible app to go to, to go to sleep and that was the moment that i was like okay not even when i'm following god can i do these things just because i follow god doesn't mean it's okay to have sin and that's what i've learned i've learned second corinthians 5 17 um therefore any man who is in christ has become new old things have washed away behold all things are new and so i couldn't do those old things because i was supposed to have become new and then I was just terrified of, after that moment of backsliding, I was terrified. And what pulled me through that is 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound and peaceful mind. And those are two scriptures that have always, always pulled me out of my dark place, always pulled me out of my sin, or always pulled me away from thoughts of going back to who I used to be. I wasn't a very good person and my walk with Christ has not been pretty. But I can say that now that I'm in Christ, I can look back and pinpoint every single time I've seen God's hand over me. And even when I wasn't following him, but it was all little steps of him saying, look, here I am, look, I'm waiting for you, look, here I am. And I'm so glad I answered that call because I don't, I wouldn't have found Brian. I wouldn't have been blessed with what I'm blessed with today. I wouldn't have been firmly rooted in Christ and it's all thanks to a tactic the enemy used against me that God turned around for good and made me walk with him. He didn't make me and made me realize that I needed to walk with him and not in my own way because my own way is leading me to death, destruction, confusion, wickedness, evilness, drunkenness, not being sober minded and those are just ways of the world and that's not who I am anymore. And if you know me, and if you know me on a personal level, this walk isn't fake. My life changes isn't fake, and you can have it too. Because honestly, being a good person, just being a good person isn't enough to get you to heaven. And that's sad to say, just knowing God, knowing of God, knowing who he is, knowing that he has a book that you don't read that is pretty much our life our, our manual to life it's not fake and i know that there's probably some of you who do know me and you're like well i know what you used to be and this and that well i'm not that person anymore and if the only things that you can attack me with are things of my past then you don't know me now try to get to know me now and you'll see that that's not who i am that was one thing i had to learn when i came to christ because i used to be that person who would judge the person that would always invite me to church and i'm like you used to party with me like you used to be my road dog how do i know this is really for real but had i just listened to her from the get-go like it'd be a completely different story so i just i want to encourage you like if you see those people who changed for the better and you don't see how they could do it like just talk to them don't judge them don't talk about them talk to them and tell ask them is this real how do you know it's real why did you change what caused the change because it's never truly anything within us but everything to do with god and that's what i see my testimony as is it's nothing to do with me just everything to do with god and i even asked brian when we first got married is i've always been the person that's got hurt no matter how much i tried to help no matter how much i cared no matter what kind of a person i was to other people i could be the best person um i always ended up hurt even now, I'm hurt now, and like you don't know that, but I've always ended up the person hurt, and I've always asked Brian, like, why is it me? Why am I always the one who gets hurt? Why am I always the one who has to pray for a healed heart? Why is that always me? And Brian told me, he's like, I just see it as your story is gonna be the one that saves lives. There's somebody out there who you feel like you have the biggest heart, but you also feel like you're constantly getting hurt all the time. No matter what you do and you're wondering, why am I still such a good person even though I'm always getting hurt? Well, seek God and he's going to reveal everything to you. And now when I get hurt, I know it's for a greater purpose. 
because God is going to turn my pain into purpose and it's going to bring somebody else to Christ. My battle scars is somebody else's salvation. And so I'm not scared to share them with you. I'm not scared to say, hey, I used to steal clothes and sell it. Hey, I used to smoke weed. Hey, I used to get drunk. I used to go out and twerk. I used to be promiscuous. Like, I'm not scared to say those things because if you were any of those things, you can look at me now and see that you could have God too. He will forgive you too. And you have his forgiveness. You just have to ask for it and turn away from your sin. And yeah, like that, like that, that's pretty much my testimony. Like somebody who was lost and dark in the world and there was no light. For a long time, there was no light. A question had to rise inside of me in order for me to find God and wanting something more and something better. And sometimes that's what it takes is for a person to hit. What it takes is for a person to hit rock bottom because from rock bottom, <clears throat> all you can do is look up and who's up? God. And so I love you guys, but always remember that Jesus loves you more. And remember that my salvation, you can have the same salvation, same forgiveness, same new walk in life. Um, you just have to seek him. And I'm always here if you want to comment down below. Follow me on social media. You can DM me. And yeah, I'll be here. And so I love you guys, but always remember that Jesus loves you more. And if you enjoyed this, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I love you guys, but I will see you guys in my next video. Mwah. Bye.